about uh, how we cope with uh, flash uh, going end of life on the streamer. Over to you, Phil. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the uh, real-time streaming after Flash. So one of the big capabilities that we've got on the uh, BHC streamer is uh, the real-time streaming. Um, and this is something that has been quite useful for people um, in, for example, repeater nets and such. And uh, this is currently implemented through, through Flash Player. And uh, this is go we've had a few questions about what's going to happen when this is going end of life um, at the end of this year. So in this talk, I'm going to uh, talk a bit about the current streamer architecture, uh, the Flash and HTML5, uh, the death of Flash, um, what that actually means uh, for this, uh, why it's a problem on the client side, but it's not going to be so much of a problem as perhaps it it sounds like to some people. Uh, the new streamer architecture, so what we're, what we're looking at putting in to replace this, um, and then what is going to change for the users. Um, and uh, spoiler here is that uh, on the publishing side, there will be nothing. Um, it's it's just, just client side. So for those of you who are, think, who are wondering how many layers you're going to need to put on to go up to the repeater site to mess with the software, you won't need to, uh, not for this anyway. So this is the uh, current streamer architecture. So we've got the uh, publishing on the left. We've got uh, the clients on the right. Um, and then the BATC server in the middle. And the key to this really is, uh, if I just bring up my pointer, uh, the key to this is the Nginx RTMP module in the middle. Um, so Nginx, this is based on Nginx, a popular web server, which we actually use for serving things like the forum and the wiki as well. And uh, this Nginx RTMP module for it enables it to understand and uh, to deal with RTMP streams as well. So when you uh, pu publish in with your, um, with your stream tag on the end there, uh, this has a functionality where it then puts out a request to the WordPress database. And this authenticates uh, that stream against the details that are stored against your WordPress account there. Uh, then that, that then returns a response telling it whether to allow or deny it. Um, and that, that makes it very, that's made the integration there very easy with, with WordPress. Uh, the main output then is, for it is RTMP out. Uh, so RTMP in, RTMP out, but it also has a functionality to build up uh, HTML5 live streaming as well. So we introduced this with the, uh, with the new server. Um, when we set up the new website system and uh, that we have those two outputs running in parallel. So the users can switch their default outputs. However, you will have noticed that if you don't have Flash and you go to a stream that's set up for Flash, it will actually put you, give you a link to go onto the HTML5 output. And I'll talk a bit more about the, the difference in those and why specifically we have the two running together. Uh, one of the other things um, that sticks out here is um, when we move to, when we put in the HTML5, uh, in order to keep the compatibility for all the possible web browsers that could be over on the client devices, uh, we had to look carefully at the codecs. And so um, the only audio codec that's currently supported by all of the web browsers, uh, all of the most common web browsers is MP3. Um, but, we had some issues where, for example, Flash Media Live Encoder, which I know a lot, it's an ancient bit of software, but a lot of people still use it. It's still quite reliable. Um, that doesn't support outputting H.264 um, at the same time as MP3. It'll do the two on um, their own profiles, but it won't do them together. So in order to make this a seamless transition for people, we've got this audio transcode in. Uh, so everything that goes through gets transcoded to MP3. Um, for the idea is you shouldn't really notice that. It just means that everything on the output uh, will work. 
So talking a bit more about the uh, comparison between Flash and uh, HTML5 or uh, their proper names, RTMP and HLS. So Flash first. Um, Flash, RTMP is the is actually the protocol that's used here. It was developed by Adobe and it's primarily implemented client side in Flash, which is why it's become known as Flash, the Flash protocol, and also Flash Media Live Encoder as well. Uh, doesn't doesn't particularly help there. Uh, the this gives support for quite a wide range of of codecs. So um, outside of VLC and other general purpose video players, uh, the the Flash player generally can support nearly every codec that your that your hardware is able to play. So originally, quite a few years ago, there was uh, some you had to have a certain age, a certain new PC to be able to do H.264. But I'm I'm talking six or eight years ago now. It's not really a problem at all now. So one of the key architectural differences here from HTML5 is that RTMP uh, runs a TCP connection to every client, and then every client gets streamed the video data in real time. Uh, as soon as it arrives on the server, it gets pushed down to each and every client. And this means that there's very little delay in the protocol inherently. Um, you basically only just get your round trip time. Uh, which is normally for someone in the UK on the order of uh, 30 to 50, 30 to 60 milliseconds or so. Um, the clients will then implement a little bit of buffer. There's also a lit, very small amount of buffer on the server as well. Uh, the clients on the client side of the BATC uh, server, we have 500 milliseconds set, uh, but VLC, for example, uh, has two seconds, but you can go into the settings and you can turn that down. And you can see if you turn it right down to zero, it, it doesn't work very well, but you can get it to work with very small uh, values if your internet connection is good. The downside, though, is that uh, the RTMP protocol is proprietary to Adobe. Um, I believe it's a little bit complicated on the patent side, and this is, this is one of the reasons why we're now seeing it um, phasing out of general support. So on the other side, HTML5, there's, there's several different protocols that are within the HTML5 standard. Uh, the one that we're using is uh, HLS or HTTP live streaming. Um, and in this, uh, when the video comes in, it will save it to a segment file. Each five seconds at a time gets saved to a segment file. These segment files are then available on the web server. And there's an index file alongside which your browser is continually querying to find out what the latest segment files are that it needs to be downloading. And the idea of this is that you end up with quite a buffer of uh, video, uh, which can survive um, network unreliability. Uh, for hours, we've got it set to five times five seconds, which in uh, we did a lot of testing in this. And this was about the minimum that we could get to work reliably, uh, especially over 3G and such. And we're aware that a lot of people use it when out portable. So this was key to it. Um, YouTube and um, other video streaming websites will use quite a bit more. This is why they have 60 seconds inherent delay. Um, they do some transcoding as well, um, but they normally have at least 30 to 40 seconds of delay actually in the HTML5. Um, sometimes you can get a lot less delay when your browser decides that it's going to uh, ignore some of the older buffer segments and start playing the newer ones. This is something I've particularly seen on Android does it quite a bit, but generally there's about a 20 to 25 second delay. So one, one of the reasons this has been quite popular on the wider um, streaming industry side is because instead of having a TCP connection for each client, and each client has to, has to receive the video data within a given window, otherwise they end up waiting for it at their end in the video stalls. Um, for this, each client just has to connect for as long as it takes to download the next segment, and then they can close the connection, which means you can have a server that's serving uh, 10 or 20,000 clients, but only has two or 3,000 active connections at any one time, which is a lot easier for the software to handle. Um, that, that, that isn't so much an issue from our point of view, because obviously we don't have quite that many viewers. Uh, it, it is something that I've seen when we were doing the, the Aris Tim Peak contacts. Uh, I ended up uh, scaling up several servers alongside, particularly so we could high, um, deal with high connection counts. Uh, but generally, this isn't an issue for us. It's just one of the reasons that the industry is, is moving on to this. 
so so this death of flash is uh the, the adobe is dropping support of the uh flash player they're not doing any more security updates um and or or anything like that um and so in turn uh both chrome and firefox uh the the dates i found for this are um end of this year firefox is coming up first they currently reckon about mid december the uh the next that's when the next stable release is uh scheduled and but with that one they are going to drop completely flash so where whereas at the moment they ask you to explicitly enable that enable it that option won't be there anymore they just won't be able to do it um, so this this doesn't mean that the RTMP protocol is end of life. So it doesn't affect the publishing side at all. It doesn't affect Flash Media Live Encoder, um, and uh, in fact, uh, YouTube and Facebook Live and such still use RTMP. Still recommend RTMP for the input because it works works very well for that. Um, it, it's yeah. Um, so one of the other things there is that the uh, because so the the browsers could have chosen to implement this directly in a HTML5 video element or such, but because of the patents and the proprietary nature of it, it was a bit too messy. Uh, so hence why they're moving on to new ones. Um, however, we are planning to keep the RTMP protocol available on the server, and that means that you will still be able to connect directly to the RTMP endpoint with VLC. I know that people do it as well with OBS using OBS as as an input. Uh, using it at, sorry, as an input for OBS and connecting over RTMP, that will still be there. And also for the ports downstream viewer, which connects to the RTMP endpoint, it, those, those will still be able to work. It's only the in-browser um, thing that we need to sort out. So hence, we need to find something new for that real-time streaming capability uh, to allow it to be useful with VHF talkback and such. Um, so the replacement we found is WebRTC, and this is web real-time communication. And th this started development quite a long time ago. Um, in, and it's rich, it's more, it's specifically catered towards uh, video conferencing and setting up video conferencing native within the browser without having to have an extra app for it. And there are some implementations around this. Jitsi is one of them. Uh, that, that actually work quite well uh, just in the browser without any extra plugins. But this is the core technology we've been looking at. Um, and it was started by Google uh, quite a while ago. Uh, they actually started working on it for Google Hangouts. And uh, then when they developed a standard and that entered uh, this candidate recommendation phase with the standards body, uh, that was when the other, the other browsers, Firefox and such, really started to pick it up. And now it's well supported within all major browsers. Uh, so the the client side of it, it works very well. Um, the server software is is the main bit we've been looking at, and of course this is mainly designed for bi-directional communication, so setting up uh, video conferences. And that, that's that's in terms of a plugin replacement for this. That's not exactly what we want, uh, but we have found this software called uh, Janus. Um, I may not be pronouncing that correctly, uh, but it's an impressive project. It's uh, all open source, highly extensible, lots of modules for it. And specifically, it has one module for it which supports server to client streaming. So a, um, an audio, audio AV endpoint on the back streaming into the server, and then it presents that as a WebRTC stream to the client with a player for it, which, which would directly fit what we need. And there's virtually no buffering or anything in it. Um, so, sorry, I've just gone back. So that that does appear to, to do what we want. Um, and we've started setting up a, uh, a proof of concept for this. So this is the new, um, the new streamer architecture, uh, which the main difference really is just that we've got this uh, web RTC uh, Janus software running here. And the idea is that we're going to push the RTMP output from here. So Janus will take uh, RTMP input um, with a suitable modification. Um, and we can then present that to both mobile web browsers and to uh, standard PC web browsers. And the, the main issue currently here is that uh, Janus is uh, 
set up to authenticate things itself, being a very large, very capable software. It's set up to handle all the authentication itself. And that appears to be quite difficult to hook in directly here. And we don't really want the authentication happening in two different places. So the current work that we're working on at the moment before we make this, um, we start uh, let, letting people be able to use this really, is getting um, getting the software to accept any stream that gets sent to it. So I'm, I'm currently trying to, trying to modify it to do that. And then we will just cut it down to streams that are only coming from internal. And at that point, we still hand the, handle the authentication on the front end, but this will still then present every stream that gets put through as a WebRTC stream. So we've currently got a, the proof of concept working for a couple of hard-coded uh, streams, but it, it just needs a few more evenings and weekends uh, spent on it. Now, I mentioned the audio transcode before. Uh, this comes up again here because WebRTC um, is another uh, different set of codecs. And uh, the main codec with WebRTC is Opus, which is a nice permissively licensed codec. However, it's of course a different one to, uh, to MP3 and Opus is not widely supported in the HTML5 HLS uh, players. So the, the current solution appears to be that we're going to run another parallel audio transcode for Opus uh, specifically for the um, WebRTC output. And um, as with the MP3 one currently, uh, that should be should be completely transparent, um, and you shouldn't have to worry about what you're pushing up to it. Uh, we we still need the video to be H.264 is still the, still the best widely supported. That will of course move on in a few years. H.265 might be more widely supported, and then we'll start to recommend that. But for now, it's still H.264, and we'll be transcoding whichever audio you put up to it so that it's compatible with all all the possible clients. So uh, as I've mentioned in previous forum posts, it's the it's the integration into our system and making sure that it fits in nicely with the authentication and such that's, uh, that's proving the difficult bit that requires more work. Um, so the other thing is here that I, as you'll, as I've said before, we're not deprecating any of the outputs. The RTMP output will remain available so that people can use that for the ports downstream receiver for OBS and such. Uh, theoretically, this could replace uh, the HTML5 output because at the point that everyone can can do the real time on mobile devices, um, then uh, there's really no no room for the HTML5 output. However, for now we're going to keep that there uh, because this this WebRTC is still quite um, experimental, certainly from our point of view, um, and so we'll, we'll keep all those there so that uh, there's so that it sounds bad but so that there's always something that works and always something we can easily fall back to and then as, as we get more comfortable with it we'll perhaps make uh, WebRTC default going forward uh, that would be a nice thing to do uh, but not until we're sure that it's going to work for everyone so from the user's point of view um, from the publishing side nothing will change we'll still be using the RTMP for upload um, so Flash Media Live Encoder will still work. Uh, using FFmpeg will still work. Using OBS, etc. Um, we already recommend the H.264 uh, because it's got wide compatibility and it's uh, it's a lot uh, a lot better than the VP9. Um, but sorry, not VP9, but uh, a lot better than the VP6. I think it is that uh, that Flash Media Live Encoder supports by default. Um, on the client side, there is, because WebRTC is a newish technology, um, you will need a reasonably recent browser. Uh, this does mean no Internet Explorer. Uh, so this, this, this list here is by no means uh, definitive. Um, I haven't actually done proper compatibility testing of the um, of what we've got so far. Um, mainly because I'm not. There, there's a couple of different players available for it, and I'm. I'd like to still have another look around um, in, in a week or two and see if there's a, a better player uh, because several of the, the current ones don't quite have the controls that we have at the moment on the, on the existing player. But this has taken off the, uh, the basic support matrix for WebRTC. So no, no Internet Explorer, unfortunately. Uh, if you're using um, the Windows default browser, it'll need to be Edge 15 plus, which I think is still 
um, I think was still released last last year. So ideally you should be running that already. And then any version of Chrome or Firefox from really the last couple of years. This does probably mean that you can't run it, you can't see it on XP, um, but uh, hopefully not too many of you are, are still running that with websites. Um, so that, so yes, this should hopefully be reasonably pay, pain free, um, so certainly for the users. Uh, we've, we've just got to sort out the integration side. Are there any questions on that? Thanks very much, Phil. That's uh, very interesting. It's clearly made a lot of progress there. I take it you can hear me. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, now I did see a question. Somebody asked, um, what is the RTMP URL for the existing service? Um, which is a fairly easy one to answer, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, it is uh, rtmp um, colon slash slash batc.org.uk slash live slash your stream um, call sign. So that is the same the same call sign that comes up at the end of the URL for the HTTPS for actually accessing your stream page. It's basically that the, the, the um, the URL in the top of your stream page, but with RTMP on the front instead of HTTPS. Yep, that's uh, really easy. And if you type that into VLC, you get a uh, really good low latency uh, stream. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very useful for checking uh, checking audio levels at events. So you don't have to wait for the uh, HTML to come through and you're making sure that the, the compression's all working well. Uh, do we have any other questions? I can't see any here. No, I was really uh, pleased to hear how painless it's going to be for the users. The fact that nothing is to change on the streaming side, on the uh, repeater side of things, that'll make a lot of difference, certainly. It, it, that that is the idea. Um, obviously, we've still got so, got some bits to implement. So uh, until it's fully working, I'm not going to 100% guarantee it, but it's looking good at the moment. Um, the question here: There's long been a security issue with Flash. Any with HTML5? Question mark. Uh, no, so the as long as you keep your browser updated, the the HTML5, all the software for that is built into your browser. So the security updates are delivered alongside the standard security updates in your browser. So as long as you keep uh, Firefox, Chrome, or Internet Ex or Edge, not Internet Explorer, um, up to date, then uh, that will deliver you all the latest security fixes. Okay, thank you. Do we apply the SSL certificate on the streams? So the um, the we we currently don't uh, use an SSL wrapper for the RTMP. There is RTMPS, which is just RTMP inside a TLS session, and I'm aware that I think Facebook um, requires that you use that for upload. It's not something that we currently implement. Um, because we haven't had too much need for privacy, but I have come, I have been thinking about it while while doing this, and that might be a capability we add so that you can do um, an encrypted upload if you want to, alongside just using the unencrypted side. Uh, in terms of the egress out um, out of the server, so to the clients, the HLS goes over the HTTPS, so the standard TLS, same. TLS 1.3 that you're using for the forum, for the wiki, for the shop. Um, so that's all secure. And actually with the move to, with uh, WebRTC, that will also be encrypted over the same kind of session as well. So the from the server to the client will all be encrypted. Uh, we will. I am thinking about adding um, publisher to the server encrypted as well, if people want that. Okay, thank you. Two questions from David. Uh, first one is, what's the typical size of the HTML5 segment files? Um, so that, that depends wildly on your video codec that you're using. Um, so uh, if you're using very low, low, it, it's your bit rate for five seconds, basically. So um, if you're do, trying to do a 4K stream through it, which, which works, um, then you're obviously going to want a high bit rate for that, and it can be several tens of megabytes. 
um, for whereas for a low quality stream like some of the ones from repeaters or such where you just got 640 by 480 it might be down at 300 400 kilobytes um, okay and are those segment files cached to disk or do they just exist in memory um so uh if if that's talking about the, the on the server side uh they are no, written i think i think it's talking about the uh client side okay on, on the client side um the the browser is probably just uh holding on to them in memory but i would assume it pages them out to disk you can of course uh, re record this there's, there's a couple of applications for uh actually downloading these segment files and reassembling them into one back into one large file as well Okay, and uh, will there be an easy way at the user end to record streams to watch later? I guess watch back is out of the question, Smiley. Okay, um, so this this is one of the things we thought about when moving to the new server is that uh, we were because we did have the facility to to record streams on the old system, and this was starting to fill up the disk quite a lot because people were using high high bandwidth streams, and paying for this video archiving uh, we, we weren't sure that that was something we want to do um, so we there is potentially the ability to do that it's it's just a question we need to think about how to implement it to make sure that uh, we, we're not uh, spending too much money on disk space really the nginx rtmp does have an ability to turn on and off recording via an api um, so yeah. We, we may be able to do that for certain event streams, perhaps. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a, a managing it as a general capability would be quite difficult, I think. Yeah, that, that, that's the concern there. If you if you want to record some something uh, yourself, then there is um, RTMP dump um, application for which you can connect to the RTMP URL and it'll download it as an MP4 as it goes. And that that's what we tend to use for recording event streams. Okay, uh, and actually Ian was talking about recording locally, and you've just answered that with RTMP dump. Okay. Um, there was a question from Brian Bailey, which said, on your server side, would there be any advantage in using containers? Yes, and we do. Yes, so the the uh, the Nginx RTMP and FFmpeg, that, that bit of it uh, sits in its own container. Um, the the database um, actually sits on the container host, and then uh, WordPress is in its own container. Uh, the PHP side of that, forum is in another container. The wiki is in another container. This is how, when we had the security concerns about eighteen months ago, now uh, we we knew that there have been no security issues across across them because that was just just in one container. Okay, then thank you very much for the, for that talk phil and for all the work you've done in the background i'm sure uh, that's put a lot of people's minds at rest and it's been really useful so thanks we'll take a quick break and we'll uh, then go on to brian to talk about mcr 21 restoration thank you thank you <laughs>